Awesome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Doug Grant here, excited that you're with us and wanted to be able to, um, oh, we're not showing the screen yet. Uh, as you're coming on, if you'll just put into the chat um, uh, where you're coming from and we'll uh, get things set up here for you um, to be able to share the screen and get our slideshow going. Appreciate you being with us uh, tonight. We just had a great call with doctors from around uh, the nation, and we're really excited to be able to uh, get with you and to be able to share with you this information that we have right now and be able to uh, get things going and teaching you about the blood and what's happening with the blood and the importance of it in our life. So, <clears throat> all right, let's hear, let me share. So I'm going to skip the intro video there a little bit and just uh, share with you that we um, have been working hard to provide you with some information um, that is new, along with the things that we've known is critical for uh, health for years and uh, decades before. And I'm really excited to be able to share some of that with you. So for some of you, some of this information will be that you knew and you just needed uh, to hear it again, to maybe implement some of the things. And um, also there'll be some new things, I think, for even those of you that are really into health and understand a lot of the principles are going to be sharing with you. So as you're coming in, um, again, you go into the chat and um, it, it's enabled now and just put your name and where you're from. And we're very excited to, to have you here with us. Uh, again, I think they're just still flowing in. Thanks for coming in. And uh, we'll let a few more people come in. I noticed the chat room just came in. So thanks. Hey, Arizona, appreciate that in the house, North Carolina, Georgia. Thanks for coming in. <clears throat> Today's focus is going to be on blood health. And for those of you that know me or for the uh, 50 staff members at the office, they know this is my favorite holiday time of the year. And um, I thought we'd play off of that, but not just because it's the time of the year and blood and all that stuff, but honestly, because of some new research that came out showing the importance of the blood, showing the importance of understanding that blood flow is critical to health and why a lot of the people that we think are, you know, walking around healthy are dying or getting really sick. And I don't know if you've noticed that lately, but over 60 bodybuilders have died in the last 18 months. We've had a lot of different athletes just, you know, flop over on the field and have major issues. Uh, some of them pass away, some of them not, but then just having major heart issues. Um, we hear word all the time from people, man, this person was really healthy or this mom was real healthy. Um, the CEO, the school teacher, this kid at school, and then all of a sudden they had a huge issue. And I want to address that and show you why that's actually happening with a lot of people around the world today and what you can do about it. So we're going to be talking about those things. It looks like most of the people are in from um, the chat room. So thanks for joining us. Oh, we got Haiti in the house. Thanks for joining us from Haiti. New Jersey, Montana. All right. Thank you. Surprise, Arizona. We were just there. All right. So let's get going. So blood health. Now, here's our big, bold statement. Pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know about blood. Pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know about blood. And I'm really serious about that. And you're like, what do you mean they don't want us to know about blood? Well, if you knew about what you're gonna learn about today, about blood cells and what affects them. You would want to improve your lifestyle way before taking drugs. And you understand that improving your lifestyle will enact faster change, more long lasting change without the side effects. Now, am I saying that drugs never should be used? Absolutely not, they, they can and should be used. But most of the time nowadays, this big switch that's happened, this paradigm shift that's happened especially in America, is that we're running to prescription drugs first thing. And when, wait, we're not, you know, Viagra deficient, we're not blood pressure medication deficient, we're not statin deficient. Um, we're deficient in the nutrients our body needs and movement and proper macronutrients, carbs, proteins, and fats. And because of that, we have these things that are causing us to have the number one killer today, heart disease. It's causing us to have blood such low circulation, cold hands, cold feet, uh, sexual dysfunction, all of these things that are being caused from problems in the blood that are lifestyle related. In other words, are caused by our lifestyle for the most part. And so we under, when we understand the blood and we understand what affects it, then we can put into play the lifestyle 
habits that are needed to be able to reach optimal health. And that's what we're going to do today. Fact number one, if your blood coagulates, which means your blood cells bind up from being too sticky, or you have too many of your red blood cells, something called a high hematocrit, a high red blood cell count, then you can get a heart attack or stroke. Why? Because they're bound together and they can't get through uh, from the blood vessels down to the capillaries. And they have a hard time getting to the heart. So heart attack, you get to the brain. It's a stroke, right? So your blood, red blood cells are trying to carry oxygen and nutrients. And if they can't get there and we have a deprivation of oxygen to the brain or the heart, then we have a heart attack or a stroke. That makes sense? Okay. Let me show you something that came from the Center for Disease Control to show you how serious this situation is right now. This just came out on September 22nd of this year. They, their own words, right, from their own webinar, the estimated number of patients needing anticoagulants, in other words, things to stop the blood from thickening, is expected to double by 2050. So instead of hundreds of millions of people, it's going to be double that. And they're saying, learn how to, you can improve the use of therapies to op optimize care. And they were inviting doctors to come on this webinar so that they can know better how to prescribe the drugs used for high blood pressure. And you can guess who sponsored this, right? So it's, I was all excited thinking, oh, we're going to be talking about the nutrition and the exercise and the lifestyle. No, it was about drugs. And so we know that the amount of people that are going to need help with blood thickening is going to double, but yet the answer from the pharmaceutical companies, right, is more drugs. Well, one question that I'd like you to ask is why is it doubling? Why do we know, or the Center for Disease Control know, that we're going to be doubling the amount of people that need blood pressure medication, things to help with um, the thinning of the blood and all that. Why do they know that? Because we know what the coronavirus COVID is doing. We know that the virus itself coagulates the blood, right? We also know that the vaccine does it. That's why Johnson & Johnson was pulled from the market. This isn't like conspiracy, one side or the other. This I'm just straight up facts that everyone that looks at the research agrees to, including the CDC. That's why they pulled um, the Johnson and Johnson, and we know that the mRNA ones um, also coagulate the blood. And so we also know that there are prescription drugs like TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, um, these you know anti-aging type of, of testosterone therapies that coagulate the blood, inc increase the hematocrit, increase the red blood cell count. So when you have any one of these things increasing your red blood cell count, red blood cell count, you're on hormone therapy, or you've got had the virus, or you've got the vaccine, any one of those is going to cause your blood to be more sludgy. In other words, it is coagulating. If you have a bad diet, eat fried fats, or you have a hard time digesting fats, you also can already have blood sludge. So let's say you already are not eating totally healthy. You have a lot of sodas, you have red meats, you have uh, fried foods. Sometimes your blood's already coagulating together. Now you add to it one of these other factors or two of them. Let's just say one. You take some type of testosterone therapy, you've got the coronavirus or you got the vaccine. Now you've doubled your risk of heart attack and stroke. Why? Because you now double the thickening of the blood. What if you have one of the others on top of it? You see where I'm going from coming to? So basically that's how come some of these supposed to be healthy people are dropping. You know, they're, they might be taking some type of a prednisone, even any type of steroid drug um, that's thickening it. Their diet isn't necessarily the best. Then they, they get the virus. Um, or they take the vaccine and boom, all of a sudden in one fell swoop, they lose red blood cells carrying oxygen, um, getting backed up to the brain, stroke to the heart, heart attack. So this is a real serious situation. Now, <clears throat> how much pressure your blood builds up determines your lifespan and risk of getting the number one killer in the world? How much pressure your blood builds up determines your lifespan and risk of getting the number one killer in the world? How do we know that? If you doubt that, ask a diabetic. Diabetics understand this really well, that as the pressure builds up because of the glucose and that uh, in the bloodstream and the insulin is not being able to put it where it belongs, that pressure builds up, puts pressure on the eye. It's come, um, you need to get thicker glasses all the time. It puts pressure on all the blood vessels in the body. Blood, the pressure of your blood build up, right? So if you have blood sludge, if your blood vessels can't expand and they're not flexible, you're going to increase that blood pressure. And that's what causes a lot of deaths and problems out there. We'll talk about the other problems. Um, hypertension or high blood pressure 
uh, we know is a leading cause of cardiovascular disease and premature death worldwide. Leading cause of cardiovascular disease and premature death worldwide. So we know that we uh, want to have the blood be thinner. We want it to be able to uh, flow freely and we want to do the things with our lifestyle to do that. So some of the signs of our blood coagulating, in other words, not flowing like it should, cold hands, cold feet, low energy, foggy thinking, headaches, um, heart, chest pain, sexual dysfunction is a huge one, slow recovery from exercise, slow recovery from being sick even, um, and obviously the high blood pressure factor, okay? So, um, and again, if you have questions, feel free to put them in. If we're not able to jump to them right this second, Josh and uh, Becky are here, they'll They'll let me know and put some in the in the questions and answers. Move them from the chat if you need to. Okay, all right. So um, thank you, and I know some of you doctors that are on here appreciate you being on with this with this uh, webinar to the patients around the nation. And a couple of you are already commenting, like Dr. Parker, that you see a lot of patients on high blood pressure medication, and um, you know the the need to be able to reduce that. And we we appreciate that and your work uh, towards doing that. Now, uh, fact number three. This is something a lot of people, you know, shy away from talking about, but it's really important. And that is sexual dysfunction. We're not just erectile dysfunction. We're talking men and women. And if you take a look at this, it's interesting that over half of the men out there experience some form of erectile dysfunction. But if you take a look at this other study, more women than men have just a sexual dysfunction. That's an interesting study. And it comes down to the same thing. It comes down a lot to blood flow. And if we have blood flow, then all of a sudden um, we have flow to every organ of the body. We think clear, we feel better. We're able to perform any type of movement with our muscles. Anything we are needing to do um, can be improved with improved blood flow. And all dis, uh, sexual dysfunction helping drugs like Viagra and Cialis, they're all based on one thing. If you look at the research of how Viagra was created, it was based on increasing a molecule in the body called nitrous oxide. And, but you can do this naturally. There's things, foods that increase nitric oxide in the body. They're called nitrate foods that we'll get into. Um, there's nutrients like arginine that we'll talk about. They increase it. So we can do these things naturally and get the body in a position to be able to perform at any level, thinking of, of, at work, in, in performance at home or um, on the field. So fact number four, your blood tells you what foods you don't digest well or eat too much of. Your blood tells you what nutrients you need, have too much of. We've done blood work now for over three decades, over 30 years, and it's real easy to tell. Uh, people, they come in, I look at uh, the blood work, and then I say, oh, okay, you're eating too many fried foods, aren't you? Absolutely every time, because we can see what happens in the blood and from the blood work, whether we're doing a lab core or quest. Uh, or live blood, we're able to see what's going on with it, where we get the panels and we get the numbers and those types of things. And so we know which foods help the body and which foods harm the body, the foods that heal versus the foods that kill. We can look at the blood live and we can see blood fats in there when they shouldn't be there. Uh, we can look and see that the size of the red blood cells, that maybe they're B vitamin deficient or they're too small and they're iron deficient. We can tell what's going on based on the person's lifestyle. So we also know that when we improve the person's diet, that things improve. Um, we've done thousands and thousands of blood work. Not that everyone um, needs to do blood work. That's not the to topic this month. The point is, is that we know what changes the blood. We know what improves the blood. We know what increase bl increases blood flow. And so another reason that blood is important for your health is because it's the key marker for optimal health, motivation, and lifestyle compliance. In other words, if I don't have cold hands and cold feet, if I do my blood pressure and I know it's in good shape and I've got good uh, cognitive thinking, not foggy thinking, I know my blood is flowing good and my nutrients are doing what they're supposed to. And so it's a great way for us to know how we're doing as far as health is concerned. Now, your blood cells help. The, what I mean by the blood cells health is I mean the energy, the vibration of the blood cell. There is a vibration that comes off of them, a very specific one. Um, your immunity, your performance, your longevity. That's what I mean, your blood cells health, okay? It determines your whole body's health. Now you have trillions of red blood cells floating around in your body. <clears throat> and the red blood cells, these trillions of red blood cells are a microcosm of the entire body. What do we mean by that? It's each of the red blood cells, even though there's trillions of them, they do everything your entire body does. Just like you take in oxygen, so they do they. You uh, eat food, so do they. You excrete waste, so do they. 
you are supposed to live to be over 110 years of age. They lived 110 days, a great microcosm. So we can look at the blood, okay? We can look at these things and be able to see that it is a direct correlation that if we know your blood cells are healthy, then you're healthy. So on my first minute of my day one, of day one of my dream job, a lot of you, are doc the doctors on here know this, um, I was told that supplements don't work. They create expensive urine just to stay out of the way. And although the owner of the team wanted me there and had seen help and some of the athletes' performance had improved, that this uh, doctor didn't necessarily believe in supplements. And uh, But the good news is uh, I knew a secret. And that secret um, helped me convert this doctor into one of my greatest allies that actually referred me to the Miami Heat and the Spurs and a lot of other teams over time. The secret... The secret was in the blood, that if we worked on the blood, made sure there was good blood flow, would have greater performance, that um, if we worked on the blood to make sure that all the nutrients were present, that we would be able to recover faster. And the blood is the key. So it's about life. It's about growth. It's about health. Now, these 250 million or even now we know there's over a trillion red blood cells uh, or trillions of red blood cells. There's over 250 million of them in just a drop. Okay. And so we're able to see a lot in a very small amount of blood. When you go get your blood drawn or anything like that, it doesn't take a whole bunch to be able to find out what's going on. Now, blood's so important. I threw up a couple of quotes just for fun here. Um, why, why I did this is for us to understand that everything keeps coming back to the blood. You always hear about the English proverb, of blood is thicker than water. An ounce of blood is, is worth uh, more than a pound of friendship. Um, blood is a very special juice. I, that was a weird one. Um, he's kind of a crazy guy, but I thought it was funny. Winston Churchill, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. And uh, Black Adam, I mean the rock, he says, blood, sweat, and respect. First two you give, last one you earn, right? So um, we're always coming back to the blood. In other words, the blood is the key. That's a central factor. Every second, two to three million red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow and released into circulation. And it's important that we give them the ability to flow freely in the body. And that's the key to optimal health and that we're really focusing on today. And so I spent this much time leading into what we're going to do, um, what I recommend that you do based on the research to be able to improve your health, to really impact upon you the importance of the blood and ask you to make a new commitment to your health based on what's good and what's best for your blood cells. Now, blood is a uniting factor and must flow freely in order for optimal health to truly, truly happen. Peter Drucker said, you can't manage what you can't measure. So we need to manage these things. And I want to give you a reminder that part of managing and staying motivated is to be able to make sure that what's in front of you all the time are things that lead you, that move um, the needle towards optimal health. That if you hang around people, if you watch things, you listen to things that only talk about drugs and talk about these bad foods and fried foods and those types of things, then you're going to be led to those things eventually, believe it or not, whether no matter how strong you think you are. And so I would highly encourage you to start a few new habits. Uh, we're working hard to be able to create things for you. Um, the We have a YouTube channel. You can go to ohsforlife.com slash YT. You can go to YouTube itself, Optimal Health Systems. And we're putting up a lot of new videos there every week. We call them Loom videos. It's a video where it shows a study, and then I have a little circle there that I'm talking to you, usually about four minutes, five minutes. Um, very seldom is it longer than that, unless it's a very special subject. So four to five minutes of your time on different subjects. Uh, we just did one on vitamin D and mortality risk. Huge study just came out last week. You got to go watch that one. Um, why am I, am I pitching this? Is just because you want to um, follow on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, things that will put in front of you the research, the motivation, the inspiration to be able to focus on your health, on your blood, uh, to keep it free flowing. And you want to have those things coming into your mind. So again, if you haven't in a while, check out um, the new uh, studies, the new little videos that we're making. We're making them every day now to be able to bring to you and come up and then just hit that subscribe button. So as a new one comes up, you'll get a little notification. All right. Most recent research, just off the subject for a quick second, that study on vitamin D I talked about, if your vitamin D levels aren't above 50, um, you have a 25% greater chance of dying before your time. There's a 75% swing in there just by having your levels up where they need to be. And in the probably last thousand blood works I've seen, I would say maybe 10 of them had the right levels before they went on our nutrients. 
And that's something that you can go up quick in. Um, I've never met anyone that we didn't put on vitamin D that their levels didn't shoot up within just three to four weeks. So it's something that's easy to do. You just have to take the right form of vitamin D, not the normal store-bought type. You want a fermented type, but if you take the right type, it goes up and your risk improves. Here's some great blood work to show how fast we can increase the vitamin D levels <clears throat> in the body and get them up over 50 dramatically. Okay. So the condition that's easy to determine that one out of two people have um, that it's uh, fixable with holistic care um, and can have major side effects if treated with drugs um, is high blood pressure. High blood pressure is the key. So I'm going to focus on it for a minute and notice that the number, the top risk factors for death around the world are dietary. So what you eat and high blood pressure and they correlate, obviously. So if you want to know what you can do to be able to improve your health, improve your quality of life right now, your energy, your, your, your uh, thinking, your cognitive function, and also uh, make it so that you live as long as possible. So both of those things, the immediate health benefits and long-term, top two things based on the research worldwide, globally, is watch what you put into your mouth, eat healthy, and then watch your blood pressure. Two things that you can do, okay? And so that's what we're going to focus on. Uh, dietary risk factors, passed up smoking as the major uh cause of death in the world today. And so you need to know that that's a major factor. And so some of these studies that are out there shows that high blood pressure, we know it can cause heart disease, but in this study, it showed it also causes dementia. The high blood pressure causes oral health diseases. It causes cancer, it causes osteoporosis. And we can see a direct correlation between blood pressure and stroke and blood pressure and how long you live. So I want everyone, encourage everyone to get a blood pressure cuff if you don't have one. In fact, um, at the end here, we're going to give you all an advantage to take uh, give you all an offer to take advantage of. It. We're going to throw some blood pressure cuffs in some of the uh, packages that go out just so you have them. But I recommend you get a blood pressure cuff. We know that if your um, diastolic blood pressure, so your blood pressure drops five points, seven points, 10 points, that you have a associated a risk factor drop of 34%, 46%, 56%. Guys, what we're saying is you're able to reduce your risk of the number one killer today, well over 50% just by dropping um, your blood pressure. So this is an important thing for you to know. Um, in the chat real quick, um, just go ahead and push the little uh, raise your hand type thing or just put a yes if you know your blood pressure. Let me know if you know your blood pressure. Uh, put it in the chat, just yes or no, if you would. I'd really like to, to see some of these things coming up. Yes, no, okay, yep, keep going. Now we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, if right now you knew what your blood pressure is, that means you've done it within like the last 72 hours, okay? Uncontrolled high blood pressure leads to heart uh, disease, strokes, kidney disease. A lot of people don't realize kidney disease is a major factor with it. And we really want to lower the blood pressure. Prescription drugs do lower blood pressure, but they come with an increased risk of about 88%. So think about this. You lower your blood pressure, lowering your risk 25% on average with blood pressure medications, but you're increasing your risk 88% of side effects of things that are going to have adverse effects, serious adverse effects. That's the craziest thing in the world. You're giving up, right? Uh, this, this place you're at and that you're fine with in certain things when it comes to risk of disease and pain, you're giving up those things. In other words, you're going to have a higher chance of getting them, 88% greater chance by going on these drugs. So I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, but if you look at blood pressure goals, they'll tell you, supposedly, you know, look at your lifestyle, look at the lifestyle factors, modifications first. But how many times are lifestyle modifications the things that are taught? They're not. Usually it's a prescription. But yet in um, the AMA's own reports, they know that lifestyle mo modifications is key. So here's the deal with blood pressure. Um, we know that if blood pressure is supposed to be 120 over 80, you're taught, right? But the truth is that if it's 110 over 70, a better blood pressure, that the risk of dying young and the risk of heart, heart disease, the risk of heart disease is about zero, just from having a blood pressure over 110 over 70. And there was a study done with a group out of Africa whose average blood pressure was 110 over 70 and heart disease was non-existent. So but they did eat mainly um, maize, legumes, fruits, vegetables, um, wild greens. So that kind of tells you a little something about the diet. 
Some of the lowest blood pressures observed in industrialized countries have been documented in strict vegetarians. Um, now, am I telling you all to become vegan? The fact is, is this study here said, hey, look, we did find out that most people won't go vegan, so we need to have something that they can work towards. The bottom line is to eat more plant-based diet. Try to limit your meats as much as possible. When you do, try to have healthy, healthier meats and just reduce them. Don't have them every single day. And what most people do is they have them at least two times a day. So get it to one time and then do it to where it's not every day. Just start lowering that consumption so that you can reduce your blood pressure, um, have more energy and be able to have a greater life. And I can tell you so many people are on these big carnivore diets, um, coming out with different names on there's a lion diet now, and it's all the same thing. And they go on and they're like, oh, I feel better. In fact, I had someone in my office today that went on one. And I felt better for quite a while, um, but then I got sicker and came down with all these conditions and uh, fibromyalgia and all this stuff. Um, it'll come back to bite you. I mean, the research is very strong. People, the healthiest people on the planet don't eat much meat. Their blood pressure is under control. It's 120 over 80 is high for the healthiest people in the world, 110 over 70. Um, so it, I'm just telling you the research. You can choose what to do. This isn't like this. The thing is like, I'd like this diet, this person like this diet. My, my job is to teach what the research says and try to help people follow that and get on board with it as easy as possible. And most people can't jump from a complete meat diet to a complete vegan diet. Um, but to go more plant-based, that is a way that you could go, okay? If you do, just small changes will increase your health dramatically. And I want to make a, a big point that raw foods have a vibrational frequency and that they help reduce blood pressure, not just because they're raw, healthy foods, vegetables, berries, fruits, um, even raw nuts, things like that but because they have a vibration that vibrates with your cells and it makes those cells uh, independent and they free, they flow freer in the body. And it's something that's really important to understand. And we can get deep into that sometime. For those of you interested in having maybe a, a frequency or a seminar on that, that would be great. Um, some of the doctors on here, 110 over 70 is my normal average. Thank you. That's great. And uh, uh, appreciate those of you that are already working on this. <clears throat> so lifestyle factors, nutrition, um, we have um, pages for you. You can ask your health professional, those of you that are on here, on a recommendation from your doctor, um, or you can ask and we can get you these. These are just example diets um, to be able, and they're, they're first stage diets for people that they are able to do this a little bit lower um, from the meat standpoint and being able to uh, be able just to eat a cleaner diet and then the nutrients that come along with it, okay? And so we know exactly what to do nutritionally exercise. I won't spend a lot of time on this this evening just to get you guys going here, um, but high intensity interval training is the best thing to reduce blood pressure. What is high intensity interval training? High intensity interval training is something that really goes back mainly to a doctor named Dr. Tabata that um, was able to show that if you did um, exercise, in other words, you went really hard for like 20 seconds, let's say on a treadmill or on a bike, right? 20 seconds as hard as you can, then 10 seconds and it's just a soft pace, then 20 seconds and you did that for eight rounds for four minutes, that you are going to be able to reduce your blood pressure, uh, be able to help your cardiovascular endurance greater than anything else you can do. And a lot of times uh, greater than things that take half an hour, 45 minutes or an hour. That's four minutes of work. It's called to body. You can look it up. There's programs on it, but it's real simple. Do something for 20 seconds as hard as you can, followed by 10 seconds of just ease of that thing or rest. And you do eight sets. That's it. Bike, running, treadmill, swimming crunches, push-ups, whatever you want to do, rowing, okay? And so are we talking it takes a lot of time to lower your blood pressure with exercise? No, it takes four minutes a day, four minutes a day. Do I recommend you do more than that? Yeah, we recommend you do strength training and all the great stuff that comes with it. But if you just want to know what you can do exercise-wise to lower your blood pressure, get your blood flowing, even if blood pressure is not an issue, you just need that blood flow, right, that we're talking about, do Tabata one time a day, four minutes, okay? Um, also, you burn more fat. It clean, cleanses the bloodstream, and uh, the it was nine times more effective of burning fat uh, than uh, steady state cardio. In other words, where you're going and just doing cardio uh, like running for long periods of time um, at a steady state. So, great thing to bottom might be new to some of you. Um, here's an example: twenty seconds full out. Um, some of you might want to go to like ten seconds slow, and uh, be able to you know like just even stop if you need to, but the best thing is just go slower at it, and then you do that. Um, 
Or you can start off and walk briskly for 20 minutes, getting breathing deep. That's great too. And then ultimate would be to do all three of these. Do your Tabata, do a walk through the day, and then strength training three times a week. That's the ultimate exercise protocol for blood health. The last, um, the last factor is nutrients. There's research showing that certain nutrients um, help with blood pressure. They help with blood flow. Uh, these are things that have been researched and proven for decades. The key, though, is the right amount of each nutrient and the right form of the nutrient. And that's where a lot of supplements come into play and why our products are in normal stores. Um, because, because most of the products out there are synthetic. Most of them don't work very well. And their dosages um, really aren't what they should be in order, in order for them to be on the, on the market like they are. So um, also, Dr. Ridgway, thanks for pointing this out. Plus, they keep recalling the blood pressure meds over cancer risk. A lot of truth to that. They, they have these blood pressure meds and they call them approved. The FDA approves them. All these studies were done. And then they recall them. Well, if they're approved, why are they recalling them? They're recalling them because they're, what needs to be done now to bring these drugs on the market's you know, literally a joke. And um, that's a come to getting recalled. And that's true. The blood pressure meds, a lot of them that are coming out now, that are out now, um, are showing that they're increasing risks of cancer. And so some of them so bad, they're pulling them. And uh, thanks for bringing that up, Dr. Ridgeway. The, a doctor from my MBA team made a comment to me, and I, I didn't want to give away what team, but uh, I think Hornets are really big in New Orleans this time of year. And you know what? This doctor said supplements can't lower blood pressure or else everyone would take them and doctors would prescribe them. That's what he told me. I'm like, okay. And so I sent him a bunch of information. Novel dietary approaches for controlling high blood pressure. In other words, this is from Journal of American Medical Association, National Institutes of Health. And what did these studies show? These studies showed that bioactive nutrients such as um, bio, uh, olive oil, essential fatty acids, nitrates from beet juice, vitamin D, um, lycopenes, um, omega-3 fatty acids, um, this, this um, phytonutrient found in green tea, dietary fiber, all lower blood pressure. In other words, the research is there that there are nutrients that lower blood pressure. And I'm talking about nutrients like vitamins and herbs and nutrients on top of the macronutrients, so right, carbs, proteins, and fats, that there are nutrients. There's double blind studies that show that they can balance many times better than drugs, but, but they're not patentable. You can't patent black seed. And so what happens is no one wants to promote them. And they'll just say, well, then they're, you know, you can't lower it or else doctors would prescribe it. No, not true. Doctors prescribe usually um, what the pharmaceutical companies tell them to do. And you can look that up, by the way. So here's another study, watermelon extract. It has an ingredient called citrulline in it that showed that it reduced blood pressure dramatically. So citrulline was the active ingredient in watermelon. Um, this, this red wine was interesting. You're like, oh, wine lowers blood pressure. It does not. The active ingredient is called resveratrol. The, the red wine, actually, the alcohol is bad for you, but they found the active ingredient will lower blood pressure. And it does it because we know there's certain things that increase something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a chemical in the body. I mentioned earlier, nitric oxide declines with age. Nitric oxide is a chemical that helps blood vessels expand. It keeps them um, flexible. As we get older, they get hard. When your arteries and blood vessels get hard, when more blood, um, blood cells try to get pushed through it, since they can't be flexible, your blood pressure goes up. Your risk of disease and dying goes up. Heart attack and stroke go up. Risk goes up. Why? Because the blood vessels are not flexible. What keeps your blood vessels flexible? They can expand so that more uh, blood can go through without increasing your blood pressure, what allows that to happen, what makes it happen is nitric oxide, nitric oxide, the chemical, and nitric oxide, the chemical is created by certain nutrients in the body, two pathways. The first pathway is called the arginine pathway. The arginine pathway is an amino acid pathway. An amino acid is what you get from proteins, from eating like beans, legumes, those types of things. And arginine is an amino acid that gets into the body by eating those proteins or taking arginine and it gets in and it boosts the body's nitric oxide. The body makes nitric oxide from this amino acid and a few others, arginine and citrulline. The second way that our body increases nitric oxide is through food nitrates. Um, these are nitrates found in healthy foods like beets, arugula, those types of things. And that increases nitric oxide. So those two pathways, that's why we utilize some formulas that that have a lot of nitric oxide containing nutrients in them like arginine, citrulline and that, that's an OS performance pack. 
and then also the nitrates that's in the chews. These are studies showing a blood pressure being able to be reduced by increasing these nutrients in the body. So we know that nitrate containing foods, the arugula, the beets, uh, putting them in different forms can reduce blood pressure by increasing nitric oxide. We know that arginine and the ar uh, ornithine and citrulline can do it. The research studies there, the double blind studies are there. So we created a pack that has all of these in it. It's called NOS Performance. It has the arginine, the ornithine, the citrulline, it has creatine nitrates in it. It has um, a vitamin D that's been proven to help with it, um, something called K2 that pulls the calcium out of the blood and puts it back in the bone. So that frees up the blood even more. And also the B vitamins that help with blood flow. So it has everything needed proven to help with blood flow. Okay. So a quick recap, largest risk factor in the world we know is hypertension. Um, basically it's systemic hypertension or high blood pressure. And it causes all of these factors. Um, and if you have any of these things, it's like a light on your car coming on saying, hey, you have low energy, you have headaches, you have these issues, you need to do something about it. The number one fix is to increase circulation without increasing blood pressure. That's what we've been talking about. How can you increase circulation without increasing blood pressure? You eat the right foods, you stay away from the processed fried foods, white flours and carbonation. If you get off fried foods, okay, white flour like pastries and that and carbonation, you're going to be able to reduce your blood pressure, guaranteed. Then you exercise at least four minutes a day, hopefully a little bit more, and you take these nutrients. That increases circulation without increasing blood pressure, okay? Here's what happens when you take these nutrients. And this is someone that took the nutrients like the arginine and the nitrate. You can see the blood vessels expand. Can you all see that? The blood vessels are expanding, more blood flow without more blood pressure. And that's what we want. We wanna be able to expand the blood vessels. So a lot of our bodybuilding athletes will take these nitrate and um, nitric oxide nutrients before stage because it expands their blood vessels. It makes them look better on stage. But for us, normal people, um, we want to be able to increase that blood flow and increase that expansion for our health. And this is just another study with like leg pain and people having issues at night. And it was just a matter of circulation. And once they increased their nitrate containing nutrients, arginine, the creatine nitrate, those types of things that we have in the NOS performance pack and the chews, their blood pressure went down and their, their circulation increased and the pain, the night pains of the leg cramps and that went away. We also have ways for you to measure nitric oxide in the body. So ask your doctor about that or call in and we can help you with it. And we know that over 10,000 deaths a day happen because of high blood pressure. So here's what you do. You take a NOS performance pack every morning. If you have real high blood pressure, take one morning and evening. Take two of the chews in the afternoon. If you want, you can add the powder with it. This is the combo that we use on every single person to lower blood pressure or to increase circulation. Um, a lot of people will use this and take the chews and uh, for date night, all those things, because it increases circulation. I mean, it's a real deal. So it's um, something that increases blood flow no matter what. But my recommendation is to increase blood flow 24 seven. You take it in the morning, increase nitric oxide about three to four hours. Then you take the um, chews for the noon afternoon. And then again, you take a pack in the evening and that will get you having a high nitric oxide and blood flow 24 seven, which is critical. So your call to action, we'll open up for a few questions and answers. And if you wanna throw some of those in there, Josh, that are coming through. Number one, commit to blood flow. Right now, commit to like, man, I didn't know blood flow was that important. I see that blood flow either causes uh, optimal health and energy and vitality, or it causes disease. Number one killer today, heart disease, causes sexual dysfunction, causes headaches causes leads to cancer, causes the osteoporosis, all of these things. So commit to blood flow and commit to the things to improve it. Set a goal to keep your blood pressure to get it to 110 over 70, um, at least 120 over 80, and then work to get it down. The healthiest uh, blood pressure in the world are the people that are around the 110 over 70. And we want you to track improvements and keep chewing for life. What do we mean by that? Is do your blood pressure often. And uh, just notice you have cold hands, cold feet. Um, see, you can feel your circulation. And just commit, I commit to have high nitric oxide levels 24 seven. That's just my commitment. Take a nitric oxide pack in the morning, the NOS pack, take the chews midday and take a pack in the evening and then to work hard to eat the foods, do the fruit and veggie, eat a lot of arugula, a lot of beets, things, uh, cherries, things that improve my nitric oxide through the day and don't have a lot of meats, don't have a lot of fried foods 
and it's time to stay away from the pastries. Now, does that mean completely forever? No, you can have those treat meals, but if 90% of the time you're doing what you're supposed to, you'll have that blood flow and your body can handle it. It's just most people cause these problems because they're adding these blood coagulating nutrients in every single day. And that's when it causes issues in the body. So thank you for being on. Before we answer questions, I want to give that special to all of you that stayed on all this time. Thank you, by the way, uh, for being with us. Your time is valuable, and we hope this is worth your while. We work hard to make it worth your time. And I want to give a shout out to our team here. We have a huge group of people that work hard to get these slides ready, to get this whole presentation ready for you all. And we appreciate them very much. Becky and the crew for marketing and graphics, uh, Josh, all the rest of the crew, the sales team that's staying late tonight for you. Uh, we want to thank them. So get optimal BFF, the blood flexibility chews, and the NOS performance pack for 20% off. Okay. So right now you get all of, both of those at 20% off. And the added little thing is that we're going to be throwing, we're throwing in some blood pressure cuffs. It is random orders um, for, uh, I think we have like 10 of them that we're going to throw in. So the first or random orders through the first uh, probably 20 or 30 that come in, we'll put some of these in. And um, so you might get a free cool blood pressure cup, one that we made actually. It says OHS on it. It talks to you. It's really cool. Um, so there's my pitch on that. Um, last thing, please follow us um, on social media. Follow us. You'll love our new Facebook and Instagram pages that the graphics work so hard at every uh, week. Uh, follow us um, at OHS for Life on Instagram, Optimal Health Systems Facebook, and YouTube. And the reason for that is that you can constantly get information about the latest research. Um, we give you the research if you follow us on um, our videos and stuff. We'll give it to you the day it comes out. A lot of times it'll even have the next day. And we got it the day before. And usually in the public, it takes months, if not years, for a lot of the research to get to the public to where some station covers it. So you'll stay up on the latest uh, information um, on what's going on, what research studies are out there and all the little tips to be able to reach optimal health and what you need to do just to keep chewing each day. So we'll go to a couple of questions. Um, question here is, uh, what do you recommend for high cholesterol levels? What's interesting is that um, we do recommend increasing blood flow for high cholesterol, right? Because you're, you're having cholesterol crystals and these things in the blood that will slow down the blood and cause blood sludge which many times is the reason that leads to the, the problems, the heart disease or the stroke or heart attack and stroke that comes from high cholesterol. But um, to answer it directly, there's a number one diet. You need to get your diet cleaned up, get off fried food, get off of the heavy sugar pastry type things, um, not an acid. So like sodas, um, heavy red meats too often. Uh, number two, as far as supplements are concerned, I'm a big fan of something that's not talked about a lot for heart uh, issues or high cholesterol. It's called lipase. It's an enzyme that digests lipose fats. These are fats that are undigested in the bloodstream, high LDL, high triglycerides, high cholesterol. And so you take the fat sugar formula, it's called fat sugar formula, and you take it between meals. Don't take it with your food, take it between meals. Why? Because when you take it between meals, it gets into the bloodstream. You take it with the food, it digests your food. So you take two in between meals a couple of times a day, it gets in, helps to digest um, these the cholesterol down as long as you quit adding additional cholesterol containing foods, um, bad fats, you know, raise the LDL and those things in the body, then it'll come down dramatically. Um, we spend a lot of time with people lowering their risk. It's the number one killer today. So most people have high cholesterol. So, um, so what if you have low blood pressure, but still want to increase circulation and improve your blood? Good question. The, the problem is, is that there's a myth because of drugs. The myth because of drugs is this, that if you, uh, improve your eating habits and you already have low blood pressure or, or good blood pressure, you improve your eating habits, you take certain nutrients, it's going to go too low. That's false. It's true with drugs because drugs force it. Okay. Drugs force the blood pressure to go low and it'll just keep going the more you take of them and then you can go too low. But what happens is when you're taking in these nitrate rich nutrients, you're eating more arugula, more beets, you're taking in um, the nutrients, the arginine and those types of things it will get the body's blood pressure where it needs to be and it'll increase circulation to where it needs to be. It won't make the blood too thin. It'll get it perfect. It'll get it to its optimal level. And if it's at its optimal level, and let's say you take in arginine and the body says, hey, we have this amino acid. We don't need to convert it to nitric oxide right now because the blood vessels are fine. They're flexible. The blood's flowing. The blood pressure is fine. The circulation, the, you know, the viscosity is fine. So let's use this arginine 
a building block, a protein building block somewhere else to help with muscle or other tissues and other things, um, uh, help with growth hormones and other things that arginine does. So the body will use it where it needs it. It, it. When you give the body nutrients, it uses them where it needs it. It doesn't force the use of them. And so even if you have good blood pressure, I still would increase and take, you know, eat healthier foods that we're talking about, nitrate rich foods. I would still take um, the NOS performance pack and BFF or at least fruit and veggie, because what it's going to do is just improve the overall health, the antioxidant level, the, the strength of the red blood cells. Okay, good question. Um, do you sell the fat sugar trim on your site? I believe so. It's on the site. You can call the reps right now if you want and uh, take advantage of that too. Um, I use several of your products. Thank you. So these webinars, I know that we end up giving you specials on the products and that, but I hope you understand you can take these webinars that are free, take the information, apply it to your nutrition, apply it to exercise and never buy anything from us. And that's okay. We just provide these and we try to give discounts on these subjects so that you can take advantage of them. And we love the fact that you understand the importance of nutrients and you use them, especially whole food nutrients like these and not the store-bought synthetics. Um, and uh, so thank you for that. But, but please know we're doing this to help educate and make some changes in the world. And hopefully along the way, people will, will, will make some of those lifestyle changes along with the nutrients and be able to reach optimal health if they just, just keep chewing. Um, we're, we're over time. Let me see if there's one other that uh, I'll answer real quick. Um, let's see here. The blood pressure circulation. So um, I'll answer this last question and then we'll let you all go. And again, thank you. And the reps are, um, thank you for staying there. We're going to be like 10 more minutes. We need to let you go so you can give them a call. 1-800-890-4547. Uh, so the question really is, uh, does everyone need to improve their blood? Yes. And why I say that is even if you have really good blood, let's say your blood pressure is perfect, you have good circulation, your cholesterol is where it needs to be, why would you still need to improve your blood? Because blood is the river of life. And anytime you can take the blood cells and help improve their strength, increase um, their ability to perform better, to, to deliver oxygen, nutrients, and pull out toxins, it increases your lifespan. Your body can focus its time on increasing its telomeres, its DNA length, and be able to do that. And it does it based on the health of the blood and how much energy it has to put in the blood. Because if your blood isn't healthy, you die. And so the more your body can uh, not have to spend the energy on keeping your blood clean that you're doing it through your lifestyle, the more it can focus on anti-aging and recovery. So absolutely, everyone should focus on the blood. Good month to do it. We're thinking about blood a little bit. Have a happy Halloween, everyone. We appreciate you guys and uh, keep chewing. <laughs>